welcome, 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 welcome back to another interesting, epic, uh, fun, I hope fun-filled, laughter-filled, maybe a few tears episode of A Guide to Poor Parenting, a podcast where me, Jason, <laughs> <laughs> I hope you know who I am by this point, <laughs> have a few drinks. And talk shit about our kids. Please follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Guide to Poor Parenting. Is this where you say the fun stories? Is that the end? I think I stopped. Yeah, I can, well, whatever. I can say it. If you have any stories or subjects or topics that you want us to talk about us, please email us. Well, that's the email part. Yeah, right? you're right. It is at the end. Yeah, okay. well, well, that's <laughs> guide to poor parenting at gmail.com. Y'all hear it again in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Miss Jennifer, how's your week been? It's been okay. It's been very rainy here, so yeah. the power has been kind of going in and out. Our uh, listening public was very sad to hear you were not here, uh, or let's see, it'll be probably three episodes back yeah because <laughs> we uh we, jennifer and i had recorded an episode about be, you know what we we're gonna do after the kids left and then i started editing it and sound it sounded like my microphone was on and jennifer was talking softly into mine across the room yeah so and y'all know i'm loud as fuck so you know that ain't right <laughs> yeah but jennifer was very spicy she was like you better tell zane he ain't taking my over my co-host that's spot. right and he used my <laughs> microphone i was pissed <laughs> Not really. Not really. <laughs> Hope you like that episode, but hopefully you like mine better. That's right. <laughs> well, how's your week been? Besides it's, being wet and rainy. Yeah, it's been okay. Wesley's head? still Wesley and attitude and mm. being bad and getting calls from school and. Now, what did he get called school from? Um, there was an altercation. Is what oh, the that's right. vice that's principal right. said that um, they were talking loud at each other <laughs> and uh, touching, putting hands on each other. Luckily, it wasn't a fight, because if it's a fight, then his punishment yeah. is that he's wearing Walmart clothes, and I'm going to write <laughs> Walmart all over him so that everyone knows that they're Walmart clothes, and he doesn't want that, because he's very into his hair and his clothes and his style, or let me change that, his drip, uh, for what all the little kids say nowadays. Um, the little youngins. The, yeah, well, I'm sure some of the older ones do too, but I'm too, too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> right before we recorded Wes was like can you straighten my hair and his hair is probably maybe an inch long but because mm-hmm. he's he's got a really tight curl pattern it's maybe like half an inch long yep. and then he's like can you straighten I'm like I don't have a lot to straighten and I don't have like a straightening tool I just have a hot brush that I used to use on Kalia's to kind of straighten the ends out a bit I tried and it just made him fluffy and I think he likes he the fluffy, to like it, so, so. <laughs> um, we'll take it. Yeah. As long as he's not mad, because then I have to deal with it later. So, this is true. you know. How's your week been? Uh, it's been uneventful. We got Kalia into drawing lessons, so she started that Monday. She's uh-huh. enjoying it. Um, we got one message back from school that Kalia couldn't didn't seem to be able to, uh, um, didn't seem to have a filter. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> welcome to my world. What kid has a filter, though? Seriously. I mean, like, normally, you know, she's she's real into this, a couple of different uh, video games and anime that, like, are kind of, like, not gory, but have a spooky element to it about, like, some kids getting killed or whatnot. Uh-huh. And so she'll talk about it loudly, and uh. and sometimes, like, it's gotten her in trouble in after school. Um, but, I like, normally I don't care. I was like, I don't care. I was like, if they ask you to not talk about, like, children being dismembered, maybe don't do it. Yeah, because, like, you know, that's, yeah. they just don't want to like, like the same thing that you like. Yeah. You know? But I'm like, I, I have no problem with her talking. I was like, I don't care. That's your, what you're interested in. What can I police that? Um, but she gets real bit out of shape. With, either way, she her filter kind of turns off sometimes, kind of stuff. We were actually just at my mom's house, like, about an hour or two ago. And she, Zayn, I have, the last couple of weeks have been making, we're limiting her screen time a bit more. Because right. she's, I don't know, we find that if she's on the tablet or the TV all day long, her behavior gets weird and she doesn't know how to interact with people right so we went out to dinner with zane's family and she was just acting atrocious like complaining and whining and had a really shitty attitude so i was just like we're gonna limit your screen time a bit and then when we were at grandma's house earlier today she was just acting she was on the tablet because she still had a little time and acting Mm -hmm. and i was like kalia this is why i (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> it's like you don't seem to know how to interact with people, and you're just making weird comments and c- kind of being rude. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, this is why I limit your screen time. Well, I guess I can't play on the tablet. What I said, <laughs> well, shit. That's what she heard. Mm-hmm. They all hear something different than what you actually say. We were at, um, we went to a Chinese buffet actually before I we went to Grandma's house, and she's gotten a bit picky with her eating. And like, I'm not, 
I'm not like forcing her to eat stuff she doesn't want to. Right. But also, I'm not cooking anything else. Right. Like if she doesn't want to eat it, she can go make herself something because I'm not cooking it. Right. But when we were at the Chinese buffet, I was like, you know, we were talking about um, um, traveling. Going, traveling, and she's like, "Oh, I want to go to Japan." I was like, "Girl," I was like, "If you go to Japan, you're going to be eating nothing but Japanese food, and like, it's you don't seem to want to be brave and try anything." So I was like, "Well, next time you go get a plate, I want you to pick one thing that you haven't tried before and try it." So we got to the buffet area. And uh, she walks in. She's like, "Does it have to be fish? Who said anything about fish? Why didn't who? Where'd fish come from? I never said it had a fish. I just said something. Try something you never tried before." Right. She's like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> so she got some lo mein. She wilted down. I was like, "Do you like it?" She's like, "Okay." Now you have something else you can eat. Yeah, Chinese, but not Japanese. Well, yeah. <laughs> Baby steps. <laughs> she's probably thinking sushi with the fish. But I didn't say like. But yeah, you know, she hears what she wants. Yeah, to hear, exactly. Just like Wesley. Like. Exactly, and any kid, they just hear whatever, was, not what you say, but what they hear. I was about to say you were just telling about how you were. Uh, you told Wesley last night that he had to clean his room, and then this morning he was like. Well, no, because I said you have to, you know, clean up your room, get your clothes, and we do laundry every Saturday. That is the laundry day, so that way if. He doesn't go back to the house until late Saturday night. He can do, you know, put up his clothes mm-hmm. on Sunday. It's what we've always done. And so this morning, he's like, I cleaned up my room. I'm like, okay, did you get your clothes together? You didn't say that. <laughs> I'm like, look here, little shit. We do this every Saturday. I shouldn't have to tell you this. It's a given. And secondly, you don't tell me what I said. Fuck I it. said this. <laughs> no, you didn't. Dude, I'm not going to argue with you about this. I'm, no, you're going to go do it. Or you're not going to get a tablet. Easy. But that's not what you said last night. I don't care. I changed my mind. <laughs> you do it all the goddamn time. So I'm doing it now. You mess up on everything that you say. And I don't call you out on your shit. Well. Well, I try to. <laughs> well. Not on everything because he messes up so much. <laughs> it would be, it'd be a job just calling him out on it. Major stuff. That oh boy. Yeah. These kids, they, I swear, it's like, they just, they, I mean, I, we must have done it too. It was just like, they hear what they want to hear. I just don't remember it. Yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of uh, weeks, though, my little brother, John, reached out to me and was like, can you help me register for Calhoun? Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, come over on Thursday. Never heard from him. Oh. <laughs> and I'm just like, you're 18 now. I was like, I spent 10 years of my life like tracking you down and making sure we did stuff and had a good time. I was like, now is your time to shine. So I was like, you want me to help you stuff? You got to follow through and come over to my house. You know, it's like, I'm not going to be the one chasing you. <laughs> I was like, I'll send you fun text messages and like stuff that I think is appropriate. They might like, I send them TikToks mm-hmm. that I think they would like, but I'm not going to be chasing for their affection. Nope. I was like, you're too old for that now. Yep. Y'all are adults now. Yep. And I, oh, I used to get so mad with John. He would, um, not, I don't, he, I couldn't, t- sometimes he could be a little, describe it, but he would like, just did not seem to comprehend why I would get upset about it. But like. Um, upset about what? Well, as an example, uh, I would pick him up and we'd go kick the soccer ball down, uh, kick the soccer ball around down at McGuckin Park, which is on Bailey Cove Road, South Huntsville. Uh-huh. And he'd be like, can you just drop me off at my friend's house mm. so I can go hang out with him? And I'm like, I'm, I'm here to hang out with you, sir. I'm not your taxi. Yeah. And, but he would, uh, I was just like, do you not understand? I was like, I'll just take you home. He's like, no, I just want to go hang out with my friend. So eventually I was just like, all right, whatever. I was like, if you don't value my time, I'm just going to drop you off. I'll go eat, read my book, pick you up and call it a day. Yeah. That's apparently my, uh, you know, Mr. I need a dad so bad. And um, Well, he treated you like one. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's what a kid would do. They yeah. don't want to hang out with us when they, when they reach a certain age. Mm-hmm. They just want to go be with their friends. Yep. I was that way. Yeah. I remember that. So he was a bit young though for that. He was probably Wesley's age. That's Wesley what. doesn't want to hang out with me. Yeah, but he wants to hang out with Ryan, but he's not mad at Ryan. I think he just wants to eat. <laughs> so I, we do have that part that yeah. you know that Ryan can still feed him, but I don't know. Yeah, well, because I think not the last time, but two times ago, Wesley had his tablet. Oh. And I usually don't let him take it, but I wasn't here, so he took it, and I think he was on his tablet the whole time. Yeah, and I never, the boys never had their tablets. They, um, they broke there so often. Yeah. They never had them. Like, they were, you think Wesley's rough on tablets and shit? 
J- J- Matt and John just broke everything. Like, I'm glad that I mean Wesley is bad, but he has not broke his tablet, and yeah. we have this big ass rubber thing around it, which helps a lot. <laughs> but he doesn't like it because he's you know it's not cool. I don't give a fuck. I spent money on this tablet. Mm-hmm. You're going to have it protected. Yep. If you don't quit dropping it, because you hear the thing drop and bounce because of the rubber all the time. You know, if you wouldn't drop it all the time. I don't know. I've come home many times and he's like, I could see the tablet case in my garage. Yeah. And uh, I can see the tablet in his pocket. Yeah. Because he wants a phone so bad, but yeah. he's not mature enough to have a phone. No. I'm not buying him. Nope. I tell him the way that things are looking, he'll have to get a job and get on the phone. Because I I just, and I'll still have parental stuff on it. No. I mean, I don't think that's inappropriate. I mean, he's just not mature enough. I mean, definitely I didn't have a phone when I was 12. Yeah. And I know a lot of his friends do, but I don't care about his friends. I mean, not like meanly, but like, you don't care, yeah. I'm not, they're not, they're not my kid. Oh yeah. No, I mean, Clea is the same way. She'll be like, can I have a, an iPad? I'm like, no. Well, iPad's expensive. Well, I could get her a used one, but at the same time, it's like, she's got a good working one. She just wants that one particular game. She can only get on Apple products. Mm. And it was like, it's not worth it to me to start monkey because like we're an android family so yep. it's like i don't want to have to as soon as i start getting apple products i have to start like having more sign-ons and mm-hmm. i don't like i have to learn a whole nother environment yep. and yep. i already have to do like tech support for my entire family on their phones and yeah i <laughs> don't particularly love apple product like i don't like their displays that much so i'm just like i'm happy to keep her off that shit as long yep. as i can i'm the one that's the apple you- well you and we have several friends that are too but I just like the, the, it's the home screen, especially for the iPads and Mm -hmm. Apples. Like with Androids, you have an app drawer where you can put everything away and you have home screens where you can just put the apps you want. You can do that on my home screen. Uh, You have like an app drawer where you can hide away apps? I mean, I have like, uh, I can move them to like another page. I got to swipe to get to them, but I can make my homepage, whatever apps I want them to be. Well, I mean, I can make mine just completely disappear to the like the only place ex- you can see them is there. oh well, I'm just delete that shit. You know, if you ain't gonna be looking at it that much, you don't need well, it. Well, I mean, like I have my like my um, what do you call it? The, like the router app. I don't ah. use it very often, but when I need it, it's just in there. Let me just put it on another page. Yeah, I'm I, not gonna talk you into yeah. an Apple, but and I'm, I'm not saying. talking to you into an Android. Yeah, not gonna happen. Yeah. I just like the customization. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, that's true. Everybody likes what they like. I used to be an Android user, and then. And Apple, and now everything's Apple, so I don't even want to go to anything else because I got everything, like iPads, yeah. computers, um, headphones, like everything, so. Well, that's kind of how I, I feel. You. That's how I feel about, like, because Apple is pretty, um, and if, if for our nine listeners, this is a parenting podcast as we discuss our preferences for about technology. Yeah, but, that's true. Um, but I don't know, like, the app, like both, it's like you have an Apple environment, you have a Samsung environment. Mm-hmm. And it's like when you're in one, it's kind of a pain to switch over to the other. Yeah. Because you have to switch everything. Yep. Because they don't play well with each other. So nope. Even when I text you, sometimes I'll text you and it's, I think it takes a while for it to come through sometimes. I think so too. Especially like multimedia stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'll text you. Sometimes sometimes it's like, you get me back right away and then sometimes it's like, oh, it's been a while. <laughs> Did she get that? Because uh, like Android and Apple just don't play well right. together. Or I could just be ignoring it. So that's true. You know. <laughs> or it'd be like me and just not paying attention to my phone. Surprisingly, not paying attention to my phone. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Well, what are we t- What are we drinking today, Miss Jennifer? We are drinking an Italian wine, and if I mess it up, I apologize. But it is Rosso Grande Alberone. It's really good. Yeah, I like um, it a lot. It's not really. It's not extra flavorful. But it's not as bland as like our uh, Costco yeah. calendars, but it has a little bit of a uh, oomph some, to it. Yeah, I there's guess. some depth to that kit. Yeah. Like, but it's not. Yeah, it, we've gotten some wines that are very bland. Yes. This uh, like it doesn't have a lot of complexity, but it does have like a a boldness in the, in yeah. the mouth. Like, like this. I like it too. Yeah. Thank you. And we were oh well we haven't but we're eating some crackers. Oh and yeah. Then yeah. it's going really well with the cheese. I think oh, we picked yeah. the right one for the snack. Yeah. So. Yeah, hopefully we'll have some left by the time we get to snack time. <laughs> well, even if we don't, we can talk about how good it was. <laughs> I was about to say, for, for our listeners, even though we do snack time at the end, we're usually just chomping away on this shit, like ducking away from the microphone yep. so we're not chewing in your ears. Yep. But trying not to anyways. Trying but not to. Mama didn't have breakfast or lunch today, so this is my... Yeah. Uh, 
absorbing my the food alcohol and absorbing the <laughs> the Italian wine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, for for our nine listeners, if you if you would like us to stop the snack time, let us know. Yeah. Because if it gets annoying, us you know chewing in your ears, just let us know. Yeah. Or uh, I don't know. I think the even if you don't like the cocktail. The, the drink we're still going to keep doing it because yep. that's part of our tagline All right and i want to keep drinking but yeah definitely <laughs> but um, if you don't like the snack time just let us know yeah. i just thought it was a cute i actually stole it from another podcast the whole concept so. well i think that's how everything kind of happens yeah. what, did, what did rupaul charles say she said uh, you don't have to reinvent the world there you go so. i think we made this our own yeah i like it uh, i did too so what are we talking about today Miss we are talking about extended family family Probably some other weird shit, because we always kind of sometimes go on tangents. Like apples and androids. <laughs> like apples and androids. <laughs> that sounds like a, a bad band. <laughs> <laughs> what does your extended family look like? Um. Okay, so... So outside of you and Wesley is what I mean. Right. Um, so mom has... Originally, there were six kids in her family. Oh, okay. like brothers and sisters. Okay. From I thought mom. you were talking about, she didn't have six kids. Who? I thought you were saying your mom had six kids. No, 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 no. Okay. My, my mom, brothers and sisters. Yeah. Um, and then when I was 12, I got an uncle. And then when I was, then I got an aunt. So there's eight kids in that side of, of my mom's, like brothers and sisters. Okay. Uh, mama had me. And then 18 years later, she had Patrick. Married a man, and then now I have three steps who all have kids. Then my and father... Multiple huh? kids. Multiple well, kids, yeah. One, well, one has one. Another one has three. three. Then another one has five. Three being her biological and two being foster. Possibly, eventually adopted. Uh, my father had a brother. <laughs> and then my, my uncle has two kids, and my father has two kids... Apparently, I have a brother somewhere. Really? Yeah, he's older than me. He's probably in his 50s, I would say. Like, he had him younger, um, like, when he was a teenager. Oh, okay. Close. And I don't know his name or, or anything about him, but apparently, I have a brother somewhere. Was it just, like, a one-night stand, or was it was I don't, married? I, I, I don't know. My father, like, I heard it from my mom, so it's like, mm-hmm. you know, my father never told me about it, so. Okay. But then my uncle has two kids, and, and he might have more. Um, that's the two I know about. <laughs> so, your dad was one of... Two children, yeah. like two boys. Yeah, two so boys. It's your dad and your uncle. Yep. And your uncle never had kids, is that right? No. No, he, Trish. He had Trish. Yeah, no? Trish and Jack. Trish he had and two. Jack. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's what I was saying. He has two, but he might have more. Okay. Because he was a little bit of a, a player. player back in the day. <laughs> well, now too, I imagine, because yeah. he's always got some type of woman with him. <laughs> and how old's your uncle, dad's brother? 60 something? 60 something. Question mark. And what about um, your mom and aunts and uncles on your mom's side um mama i want to say mama is she's 65 she's, isn't she she's 62 it's two oh, right. yeah because she's 20 years old me so i know exactly yeah, how she just got she social security this yeah, year so yeah. that... i think so mama is the oh, you're gonna make me do math third youngest i think so second or third youngest she's in the middle um i want to say i could get this wrong so if, if any of my family ever listened to this i apologize reiner or doris are the top and then I want to say it's Uve, and then it's Mama, and then Elki, and then Meki, or it could be Mama and Elki are mixed, or like I'm switching them. And then Meki, I know Meki's the baby. He's 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 my one of my he's one of my favorite uncles. I love him to death. Um, and then well, Meki is his nickname. Stefan Stefan is his real name. And then then there's Daniel who was I was 12 and he was born and then there's Saskia who's the baby baby but I've never met Saskia now I know you have a flight attendant relative is that a cousin or is that's that a cousin, a cousin? Yeah, that's okay. Doris's daughter Vanessa oh, okay okay yeah so is that your younger the aunt and uncle that you're older than are they still are they had you know them well oh no. I'm friends with Daniel on Facebook but I don't um I don't even think he remembers me. Like I said, he, he was a baby baby when I was 12. So I, was, gotcha. I changed his diapers, yep. which is weird to say that I changed my uncle's diapers. Um, but he he probably doesn't remember me because it was so long ago. It was is, 30 years ago. Yeah. Is that like, I, don't, I, I never th- pictured Germany as like having big families. Is that common? Like, it's very common. It's always here like Europe is suffering the same kind of problem that Japan is, where like, replacing babies quick enough. I really. Don't know. I can just 
talk well, about they're, they're all boomers though right like your mom's a baby boomer. sure what do you yeah. mean but like but she's you, the baby boomer generation so that oh, the post-war baby boomer. yeah she was born in 61 so whatever that is I don't even know what the hell I am because they do change in years sometimes. I think you're a zennial. You're an exer. You're like that that midway point between a, zen, a Gen Xer and a millennial. I'm just me. You're just me. I don't care about labels. But yeah, I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't know if there was a lot of families because in my family, one uncle has two kids, an aunt has two kids, another aunt has two kids, one has none, and another has none. I don't know about Daniel and Saskia, mm. but like I didn't have that many cousins growing up because my uncle had Trish, who's a year younger, older than me. And then I had Vanessa. She was born when I was 12 because Daniel and Vanessa were born about the same time mm. and we all got baptized together. But you were also like not in Germany around them growing up too. Well, I mean, I was there when they were born, but yeah. then, yeah. yeah, and then we had to move. Did your other aunts were probably like two or um, well, I mean, I think Doris is like 68. Okay. They're, they're all kind of, I think, close in age besides Daniel and Saskia. So I think they're close, but I'm not really 100% sure just because I have a horrible memory. And how many of, so how many of them are still in Germany? Oh, Four. Oh, I thought they were all except for no. one. No, uh, Doris is in the States. Elkie's in Germany, Uwe's in Germany, Reiner's in Germany, Mekki's in Germany. So they're, they're all in Germany. And there's eight siblings, right? Oh, yeah, well, Dan, if, sorry, I always think of aunts and uncles. I don't really put Daniel and Saskia in it oh, okay. because I don't know them very well. I didn't grow up with them, yeah. you know, because I was so much older. Uh, so then I guess out of the eight, six are in Germany. Yeah, your mom yeah. and Doris, Doris are, here. are here in the States, yeah. yeah. And you're, I mean, you're pretty, like, you've always been super close with different person, but, like, okay. how, um, what about your other aunts and uncles, including your father, super close with them? Including my father. Your father's sibling. Oh. Your, your, on your father's side. Um, well, so because we moved around so much, not really. I mean, whenever we were somewhere. So I would say the German side of the family I'm closer to because we got, they were, you know, we were there for three years. Oh, uh, yeah. So we got to see them a lot more. When we came to the States, I mean, we might go every, maybe like once a summer to drive up to Illinois to, to see my grandma, my grandpa, my uncle, but... I didn't get to see them a lot. Not like, because I guess my mom relied on my father because my father wouldn't let my mom drive. Right. So, and then it's a long ass drive too, because I've driven that multiple times and it's not fun. <laughs> but, you know, in Germany, you take a train mm -hmm. and it was my mom's side of the family. So if my father is deployed or if he's, you know, on assignment or whatever the fuck the army does, we would just hit a train. Because you don't need transportation. Like, you don't have to drive, I mean. Yeah, you don't need You know, car. there's so much. Even though we were in the bumfuck of Witzburg, you you got, somehow you got to a place where you could get on a train and get to Nimburg. And so that was, we spent, a, I remember spending. And then also, when we came, when I came to the States, the, the last time when we were like here for good, my family got money together and flew me to Germany by myself. Twice. So I spent a whole summer just kind of, usually I think I stayed with Doris most of the time, but then I would like spend the night at Reiner's or Mekki's or, you know, or Oma's, uh, which is my grandma. And then, you know, I would run around town by myself, like going to Opa's, my grandpa's, or, mm -hmm. you know, just visiting wherever I wanted to go because it was safe for a 12 year old yeah. to, to go by themselves because they knew where I was going, one thing. And second, it wasn't. Stranger danger, like that yeah. whole thing. Like I don't let Wesley out of my sight because it's scary now. But they didn't think about that back in. Yeah. They just take the U-Bahn, uh, the subway, or take the trolley or the bus or ride a bike. I mean, you could just go everywhere yeah. and not have to. I didn't have much parental supervision. <laughs> but so yeah, I'm really closer with them just because I they made an effort to send me over there and then yeah. I just got to live with them. You know, for almost three months, because that's about how long summer I think time was for, for a, for me being out of school. Hell yeah! Yeah, it was Love awesome. To spend some summer. Zay and I actually talked about that, like when in like five or six years, like see if we can get like a, a fully remote job, and then just us go spend the summer in Europe. Kalia's and you know, it's like okay, you're out of school. Let's go to Europe for mm -hmm. six weeks. We'll work remotely, and you just go play and explore and eat McDonald's every day because you won't try. <laughs> Foreign food. <laughs> she likes brats, doesn't she? Um, she likes sausage, but like she doesn't like the grace bratwursts. 
the one well, there's we've, different types of wars. I know, but like the the ones we we've, we've gotten have been like kind of the gray colored ones. Mm. And she's like, I don't want to eat gray sausage. I'm racist. <laughs> Well, she will eat whatever she gets hungry enough. Well, that's what, we, you know, this is kind of a fanciful thing because it's all, not fanciful, but it's also like a far off thing because they didn't have to work remotely job. And I would have to have a job that doesn't government go overseas mm. currently. And gotcha. I have to get back into like a commercial company. Yeah. So, but it's still something fun to think about. Well, I have 30 days of annual leave. Well, I just think it would be perfect. Like, we go get an Airbnb for six weeks, oh, yeah. eight weeks, something like that. And then just, like, anybody wants to come over and visit, come, you know, we'll have two-bedroom apartment or something like that. Yep. Throw Khalil on the couch where we have visitors. Yeah. And I just think it would be a blast. Yeah. That's what I would love to work remote so that I could do that. Yeah. I don't mind working during the day and then going out and having fun at night and then mm-hmm. having the weekends too. Shit, yeah. Let's do it. Hopefully that new job you're getting. Uh, we'll <laughs> Knock see. on wood. Yeah. Okay. So... Um, I guess when I when we're talking about extended family, how how important like your so your step sisters are all here, mm-hmm. and I would say you're probably closest to them, or at least um, not that the others aren't nice, but it's like you're just you have more in common with um, one of them at least. Yeah. Yeah, I have a favorite. So, yeah. I, don't, I don't mind saying it. I do have a favorite. <laughs> so if the other two are listening, we're not going to name names. No, no, they know who they are. <laughs> okay. Um, but how like when you when you're you didn't meet them until you were like 20, right? Yeah, I was older. Yeah. And was it, how, how did that relationship build up with with your sister? Just um, over time, to be honest. Um, Thanksgiving, Christmas, you know, because mama and pops are big on getting everybody together and eating. Mm-hmm. Um, so it would be every Thanksgiving, every Christmas, I would, uh, I would see him and then we would sometimes do things like a, Eventually, we started doing family vacations together, and we would all go, like, to Kentucky, or we went to Orlando, to Kentucky. So we would try to get all get together to hang out, and and so over time, it just kind of, it took a while, um, because there, I think there was a little bit of, you know, animosity with, you know, Pops marrying mom, my mom, and then on another side of it, you know, us being white and them being black. Did they view you as your mom as the other woman? Um, I think so. They weren't. I know that their mom thought that I, that mama was the other one. But they had divorced, hadn't they? When she, when I she really did. don't know, and I'm not going to put any, uh, any, not gonna, any okay. tea out there that I, <laughs> I don't want to say anything wrong. Oh, okay, yeah. So I don't know if I don't know if Pops and Christine were ever married, to be oh, honest. Oh, okay. So I know that she she's you know she's passed, um, and she passed either on my sister's birthday or like the day after my sister's birthday, and it uh, Patrick knew their mom um and and he loved her so he was really sad when she had passed i thought she threatened him one time well when she, he was a baby yes. oh, okay okay yes. um and me um but like it's i don't know it's weird because you know i never grew up with siblings and then now i have four and i don't I see the way that sub siblings act, and I've heard stories of how siblings act. And then I see how Wesley and Kalia act, which, in my opinion, they act like siblings. I will say I'm very glad that they're not like some siblings that run after each other with kitchen knives, or <laughs> um, you know, try to cut each other, or hey, or really, my... really hurt each other. Don't bring me in Kyle's relationship. Into I this. mean, <laughs> but I mean, it's yeah. you know, it's I've heard it's this true. shit, yeah. and I'm yeah. like, whoa. You know, them being mean to each other is way different than that. So it's like, I, you know, I'm yeah. glad, you know, they, they talk a lot of shit and they annoy the fuck out of each other, but they don't. I think if they were both boys, it would. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so they would. Worse. They would be like in the front yard punching each other, practice fighting. Probably. Or, yeah. you know, one of them would have stabbed each other. Yeah, right definitely. Now. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't have that relationship. I feel like your relationship is more like a... It's like friends. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say more like auntie. Because you're kind of the more responsible one of everybody, of all your siblings. But I'm not that much older than them. I realize, but you're also more, a lot more mature. But I but I've, I grew up quick, and, and I matured really quickly. Yeah. Like, I, you know, some, some people don't have to do that. I did. Um, 
And that is true. I guess I could technically be like an auntie. I'm an auntie. I'm an auntie or a mama to so many people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not funny. And I've always been that way. Yeah. Like, I always know where everybody is. Like, you know, hanging out, going to the club back in the day in my 20s. I would know where everybody was. I would never lose my cool. I was always the DG. I was always, like, just taking care of everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's always been my person. Yeah. But you are, like, of the siblings, you are the oldest, right? Yes. Yeah. Out of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it just as an outsider, it feels more like an auntie. Yeah, well, I guess you could see that. Yeah, I mean, like you're, I can definitely tell there's a closeness with uh, one of your sisters more than the others. Oh, but, yeah. uh, but it definitely does feel like because you were let, you were a secondary mom to your brother basically. Yeah. So it, you know, it just felt an extension of because even with that, the one you're closest with, uh, it it feels a bit more of a caretaker. It feels like a much younger sibling that you feel you take care of her. Yeah. So. And I have. She's lived yep. with me with her kids before. I loved it. It was great. Um, it taught me about kids. Not <laughs> as much as Wesley has taught me about kids. Then yep. two twins and a, a little boy. He he was, he's just his own part. He's different to say. <laughs> he's a sweet little bug. No. <laughs> oh, you're talking about Wesley? You're talking yes, about Wesley. Your not not, oh, no, okay. not okay. no bug. No, that's my baby right there. Oh, okay. He he did no wrong, even though okay. when he, he did a lot wrong, but he was still my baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a big boy. Yeah. But yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty much, a, a, it's a lot of family, but we never really got to spend a lot of time with family just because of the, the army and moving. Yeah. I feel so somewhat, I, I, with the exception of siblings, I feel somewhat similar because I'm, um, so I am, my mom is one of five and my dad is one of four and they're all um, silent generation. They're like the eight, the generation before boomers because mm -hmm. they're so, like my dad was the third youngest. My mom and dad were the third youngest. My mom was born in 42. So I think f boomers started at 45. Okay. So they're all old as fuck if they're not dead. Um, but like I, the age differences between my cousins on both sides is huge. Right. Um, dad's, I have one cousin that's close in age and I'm pretty close to her. She's kind of like a sister. Kelly, you've met her yeah. before. Um, and she's I've got, awesome. yeah, she's a, she's, and I love her mama. Yeah. <laughs> Good old Nancy. Yeah. Um, but, like, on my dad's side, my eldest cousin is, uh, is a boomer, is 65, 67. You know, she's cl getting close to 70. So yeah. her mom. You know, so uh, talking but, about aunties, that's kind of like your cousins were like your aunts and yeah. uncles. Like. But Kelly and I were, Kelly was in California and so it wasn't around the family. Right. I was the baby, but I was also in Austin. Most of my family's in Houston, Dallas area. Right. So I never, I wasn't around them a ton. But that's just a couple hours away, isn't it? Yeah, but we didn't like, we saw them maybe two, two or three times a year. I got you. So I saw my, my Aunt Nelda the most, but her son, her youngest son was... 10 years 10 to 15 old years older than me yeah and so i you like, don't want to play with a yeah he five was, year old when you're 15 years older because yeah he like he had no interest in and i just didn't see he was already at a house by the time was, oh okay so it's like i didn't really hang out with him or anything yeah. like that um but I, like i would say I'm, i i do have a brother um but we're not super he's four years older than me and he's we're not super close right we're just our personalities are way too different very much so i've met your brother yeah and like I, I don't know. Like our our live our lived life experience is so different too. Cause, right. I don't know. I take after my parents so much more, and he's kind of an irresponsible. He never kind of grew up. He's got a Peter Pan syndrome. Um, so I like just don't have a lot to relate with him. And as we get older, it's like okay, I'm gonna be taking care of you after mom dies because she can't. You know, he he's not gonna take care of himself. So right. But. I would say, like, I, my aunts I'm pretty close with. Um, my Aunt Nelda, my mom's next eldest sister, Nelda. Oh, speaking of funny things, did I tell you about my mom's sisters? And Which the naming one? scheme my grandma picked? Yeah. So, for our listeners. But for the listeners, yeah. they don't know about it. So, um, aunties, I love you. You're 100 years old, so I'm not worried about anybody finding <laughs> you out. Um, my eldest... Aunt, um, so my aunt's aunt, my my mom and her sisters have a naming scheme that grandma used. The eldest one was Wanda Fay, then Glenda May, then Nelda Ray, and mom was going to be Linda May or Linda K, I think it was. Yeah, Linda K. 
but granddad uh, got a hold of, he's like, we're not naming her that. So they named her Ruth Thelma. And everybody on my mom's side called her Ruth Elma. They just combined that TH, those last two <laughs> THs. It's just, she was always just Ruth Elma. Um, oh, so if you're hearing a honking, oh, my husband just got home, Zane. Just got home from uh, working on the weekend and cars but beeping. I will say I'm pretty, like, I, I, my aunt was just a spitfire. She was just... Nelda, right? Nelda was yep. my mom adored her. Everybody in the family adored her. She was just she was the oldest, right? And she was the middle. The middle, oh, okay. She was the middle, but she was like uh, everybody. All the sibling, all the the my my mom and her sisters said she was the most beautiful um, of them all. Mm-hmm. But she was she was just sweet, a spitfire. She would say any you know she thought something was unfair, she'd say it. Right. Um, if I she kind of reminded. Did you ever watch? Um, Designing Women? Yep. Remember Dixie Carter's character? Mm-hmm. She reminded me of her. Okay. She was just a, a spitfire of a woman. She had a temper, but not never abusive or anything like that. Just right. And, like, we all gathered at her house for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and we would... Um, she was... And so I've always... I've tried to take after her a lot. Because right. I tend to be like, oh, I try and gather everybody around me like she did, too. Yeah. Um, and, I mean... To say you are like the best at keeping in touch with. Her. I don't know, like how you got ingrained with that. I don't have that because I don't like talking on the phone to begin with. But like you make it a, a point every week to talk to someone in your family to just say, "Hey, I'm thinking of you. I'm catching up. How are you doing?" You know, whatever. And sometimes it might just be a two-minute call, and then sometimes it could turn into more, but you don't care either way. You're just, hey, I'm reaching out. Yeah. And I think that is the coolest thing about you, that you would do that. Because you're always, always talking about, like, leaving me. And you're going to have to make me talk on the phone, but (laughs) you would. Oh, yeah. And that's the thing that, so that way I know we'll always keep in touch because you'll make me talk. Yep. Even though I don't want to. <laughs> oh, well, my friend Michael is that way too. He's he hates talking on the phone, but I was like, oh, I just call incessantly. Yeah, I will call like, oh, you don't pick up today? I'll call tomorrow. Yeah, and then I'll call the next day. Yeah, <laughs> so. and I don't have that drive to yeah. to, to. I've I've lost a lot of friendships because of it, but it's not on purpose. Yeah, I just, it's just life kind of happens, and I don't think about it. Yeah, Zane's the same way with that, and I think I, honestly, I don't know a lot of people that do it. I, it's yeah. just something that you well, do. I, I think part of it is I don't really care about music that much. Mm. I want some background sound. Right. So I'll, if, the, if, if, if there's no one in the car with me to talk to, it's like, okay, I'll listen to music. But my favorite thing to do is like, okay, I'm on in the car for 20, 30 minutes. Let me just call someone. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, we'll just shoot the shit for a little bit and then I can go. Yeah. And it's just become a habit now. I will say with my aunts, that started with Nelda because she... Um, Right after I moved to Huntsville, she had a stroke and she lost her ability to speak and she was confined to a wheelchair. So she was, and she was always like a good time gal. She was, you know, let's go to the bar. Let's drink. She was always a fun time gal. I would think I would love You Nelda. would have loved Nelda. She was a blast. Um, so I would write her a handwritten letter every week with, and sometimes with some pictures because she was, um, she was stuck in a wheelchair. She couldn't talk. And I just felt bad for her. So I was like, I wanted to, you know, keep her up to date. And um, I know, like, my other aunts had told me that she really treasured those letters because, you know, I didn't, I couldn't talk to her. Right. So she could hear about what was going on. It's super sweet. Like, yeah. super I was, lo- sweet. like, I just moved here and I was kind of lonely. Yeah, so it was something but I could still, do. like, to, yeah. to make her day. Yeah. With a letter. I'm sure she loved that. Yeah. I tried. And then after she passed, well, while I was doing that, my uncle, my mom and Nelda's younger brother, he was in the um, nursing home because he was, he had schizophrenia and was couldn't really take care of himself. Uh-huh. So I started, he was jealous and he, he was like, oh, not that he, he wasn't like mad, but oh, he was okay. just like, he felt left out. But I never, really, <laughs> I never was never really close to him. So I started doing postcards to him because I like, I didn't have anything to tell him really. So I was just like, oh, here's a postcard. Right. And I just bought like a pack of them and was like, hey, uncle Eugene, here's my, there's a postcard. Love you. And I'd ship it to him. Um, but after she, after Nelda passed in, what did she pass? She passed before dad did. So it would have been like 13, I think. 
Um, but when she passed, I was like, you know, I'm not... I would do that for Nelda. I'm like, why don't I start doing it for my other aunts? Because I had four remaining aunts. Right. So it's just like, okay, Monday is my Aunt Nancy. Tuesday is my Aunt uh, Martha on my dad's side. Then mm-hmm. Thursday was Aunt Glenda on mom's side. And then Friday was Aunt Faye. And it was convenient because I would like go out to lunch and call them. But it's just always something I've done. I don't uh, know. Like I said, yeah. sweet get sweet. And like, I, I will say, I, of all my... Uh, all my friends from Texas, I I've certainly let some slip by, where it's like I don't I don't communicate, but I definitely have a core group of probably five or six friends from Texas that I am uh, hound constantly by yeah. just calling. <laughs> it's like I miss you. I want to hear your voice. You're fun. Yep, and so, I think I know three of them. Yeah, uh, Lindsay, Michael, Feige. Yep. yep, and then I got like three others you haven't yep. met yet. But I don't know. It's just something I do. It's very, very nice. And it helped. I mean, I'm sure the family really, really likes it, too, that, you know. Well, my my mom was telling me that she, you know, she's always, anytime she talks to her sister, she's like, they're always telling her they appreciate oh, yeah. my calls. And, like, I was like, anytime I call my aunts, I'm like, oh, have you heard for, and from any of the family? They're like, no, you're the only one who calls. It yeah. just breaks my heart. It cause, does. Because at, at least on my mom's side, my Aunt Faye is 80, or will be 89. Death is a doornail. Yes. And so I, every time I call, she just screams at me. And I love her death, but she's just like, Jason! <laughs> you're like, oh, Jesus. Faye. Sorry for everyone's ears at <laughs> <Yeah>. that moment. <laughs> yeah. She just, she'll just scream into the phone. But she, she's so She's so sweet. Cute. She's so cute. I got to meet her once. Yeah. And she's so cute. And just every time, like, and then we, you even do, like, roll call with me. And I do roll call with you. And, and then when I mean my roll call, is like, I'll ask you, like, hey, have you talked to Faye? Oh, yeah. Or Abert. <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, or Nancy. And then you'll be like, have you talked to your mama or, you know, Patrick or, you know. So yeah. we kind of keep track of each other's people's. Yeah. In that way of, and, and that's why, I don't know why I called a roll call. It just came to my mind. But it's kind of like what we do. It's like, hey, okay. So I've <laughs> yeah. talked to so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. Mm-hmm. Or just to kind of keep up and I see was how gonna, everybody's doing. <laughs> when you're talking about not falling through or not keeping up with some people, I always get them to Zane because I'm like, I was like, call your, he's got a bunch of friends from Peace Corps and they're all over the country. And he's like, oh, every time we talk, it's like we never went anywhere. I was like, call those motherfuckers. I was like, you just, it slips away from you and then you've lost a friendship. Not because of anger or sadness, but it's just like, it slips away from you. Yeah, it's not that you don't want it to. Yeah. It just just, Life gets in the way. Life so much gets in the way. Mm -hmm. And you don't let it. Yeah. And I really envy you for that because... I have had a lot of friendships that I look back and I'm like, wow, I wonder what they're doing now. You can always call them. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. But I don't have their number or, you know, I don't don't remember last names because I have a horrible memory. Well, but it's just kind of, you know, and then, and then life, okay, so you get a kid and then your friends that don't have kids are like, yeah. well, fuck you because I don't want to deal with kids. And then you lose them or... Yeah, you know they get married and then you get, get kind of pushed away because yeah. it's them now instead yeah. of you know the three of you or whatever the circumstance will be. Just shit happens. But I do envy you for being able to keep up with everybody. Well, I will say if I, it it requires some reciprocation, like it, if if I have friends that just do not call me back, and you keep trying and they don't, yeah, yeah, it's it's like okay, I've tried my best. Now, I will say, like, with Michael, I have, um, he was getting, like, he was, Feige, like, got to the point where he was like, I don't want Michael's friend anymore, because he was, like, not calling any of us back. Um, but, um, yeah, I'll take some more. <laughs> Jennifer's, like, pointing at the wine bottle, I'm like, yeah, I'll take some more. Um, I, Michael was going through a really bad period, so I didn't hold it against him, but I also wasn't going to let him, like, slip away from me. So, I would call the shit out of him constantly, and he'd be, like, he would never pick up. But I just kept at it because I, I figured by the I, by the time he was past all his problems, he would appreciate it. And he's told me now that he really does. So I'm glad I have kept it up. Yeah. So like when I talk about moving away from Miss Jennifer, just know that even if I do, I'll be calling you. I'll just follow your ass. Well, and I'm not like I told Zane <laughs> this. We're not going anywhere till my mom dies. So right. and I call like when she was in Texas every day. I would call her and my dad every day. Yeah, but I'm just following you. I already no, told I you that. Well, I mean, I'm gonna let you have Japan because <laughs> I'm nice. 
that Thanks. for you then that for the listeners that's zane and jason's anniversary they won't let me go i've tried like talking about getting in the suitcase and <laughs> and just following them around but they were like jennifer we really want to do this by ourselves and i'm like okay <laughs> um i'll let you have that but anything else it's it's, it's non-negotiable I'm oh, okay and that's just me being, that's probably not going to happen because <laughs> my mama lives here. <laughs> I'm about to say, you're not going to until your mama passes. I'll, I'll visit places, definitely. Mm-hmm. I don't know about moving, which it is kind of sad. I don't get to see, I don't see my mama that often and she lives in the same town as me. So, I mean, it's kind of, it'd probably be better if I moved away because then it would be, I would put more effort into seeing her because I don't live in her. I live five to 10 minutes away, and I don't see her that often. I well, try, just, but it's you okay. know, life again. Okay, I was wondering about that because, like, even when I don't know, I I think I also have like uh, pro- I probably have mommy issues um, where <laughs> I I you know like feeling neglected, so I'm always ser- searching for mommy's approval. Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm always like up my mom's ass, but I think as she gets older, she really appreciates it. Right. So, especially with my brother because he's. Again, kind of got a Peter Pan, so I was, yeah. like, I was like, okay, let me check on mom. Yeah. It's okay. You make sure mom's okay, and yeah. she makes sure, so yeah. it's kind of a, a cycle. The thing is, is that mama goes to bed wicked early, because pops goes to bed wicked early. Yeah. Like what time? Eight? Like eight o'clock. That's when you go to bed. Well. <laughs> not on the weekends. Not on weekends, but also I have to cook for Wesley, and I have to get ready. So it's like after after I get him at like 5, 5.30... Yes, I could go to Mama's, but then I have to go get fast food because there's not enough time to yeah. eat and then shower and then get ready for bed because his bedtime's now 8 instead of 7.30. But it's still a small window. Yeah. And it wouldn't be very long of a visit. And then also... Sometimes the length is I, I know, I know. <laughs> in this circumstance, I guess it's not. But in others, length is an issue. Um, oh, my. <laughs> but, like, I don't feel that I... It would... I don't know. I had a thought you interrupted me, and then now I can't go back to it. I apologize <laughs> Sorry. to the listener. Um, Do you ever feel like you're imposing? Well, in a way, maybe. And then also, I don't just show up at people's houses. I've never been that person. Oh, well, yeah. I like, I let people know I'm coming over. Mama's like, you can just show up. So apparently, some of my sisters just pop up. And I respect privacy. And, you know, if, if you're eating, I don't want to interrupt. Like, I'm too much of a... People pleaser, pleaser. <laughs> people <laughs> pleaser that like I want to make sure that I'm welcome and that you know and you know that it's okay well yeah but like I, I go to my mom like I let my mom's like three hours ago and I just was like hey can I come over yeah I mean I could do that I just don't okay. I just feel I don't I don't know it's weird it's right. and it's it okay. might be pops be the reason why like I don't just show up you don't want to impose because there's him. a man in the house I um, guess Cause like growing up, it was my father, but he was military, so he was gone a lot. So it was just me and Mama. Yeah. And then when we lived at the apartments, she was dating pops, but he didn't live there, so it was just me and Mama. And then it was Patrick, me and Mama. So it's like me and Mama, you know. So and then now it's different because I'm old, really old, and you know they're married. So like I don't want to interrupt a marriage. <laughs> I don't know. Does it, is that weird? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's okay. You're allowed to be weird. I'm, uh, I'm weird. very weird, so I, weird. I am proud of my weirdness. Thank you very much. <laughs> but so that's why I don't do it yeah. a lot, because and then also life. Yeah. I'm thinking about what I'm gonna feed Patrick, uh, Wesley, not Patrick, Wesley. And then I'm thinking about this and that, and then it just doesn't cross my mind. I'll message her all the time, but like I'm just thinking about you because mm-hmm. that that moment I can do that for that second and let her know. But that's about. Because I'm usually at work when I think yeah. about it. So I don't know. It could be well, well we're, you're actually going to watch Kalia. Not this. We're in the middle of a weekend right now. But like next weekend, you're going to watch Kalia. It's like, <laughs> go take Kalia over mom and pop. <laughs> mom and papas. Wesley would get so fucking jealous. Oh, uh, would he? Oh, my God. Okay. If Kalia was around his Oma mm-hmm. and his pops, I think he would not like it. Okay. Never mind. You know he's weird. I do. I do. I was just going to say, if, like, Ashley and Noah were going to be there, maybe they could all hang out, but whatever. Um, whatever. I might be hitting up Ruth, Ruth, Ruth Elma. Ruth Elma? Yeah, I might be hitting her up. <laughs> Grandma. Like, we got to go swimming. Oh, oh, no, we'll be on our period. 
Yeah, probably. Shit. Okay. <laughs> it's been for our listener for our nine listeners, Kalia started her period this year, and so it's like it's been a it's been fun about trying to figure out periods because we were she wanted to go swimming the other week. She's like, Can I swim on my period? I'm like, if you can put a tampon in and she's like, I don't want to put a tampon in. Like, okay. I don't know. I think we should just get her some like they make, diapers or they, wet pants. They you know? make swimming period panties. Yeah. But she doesn't want them. Oh. Maybe if I wear because we we're on the same cycle, which is really weird. Because we don't live together. No, usually women get it when they live together and they're around each other 24-7, not just on weekends. That they're on the same cycle. So, it's, I mean, I'm not... It's, it's easy for you to know when she's going to be on it because I just tell you when I'm going to be on it. But yeah. I'm also tracking it, so... Well, that's true, but I can also just tell you, okay, I got two <laughs> more pills left in my birth control. Um, <laughs> and I could just say, hey, I got them on too. Maybe yeah. that would work. You can talk to her about Because I don't want her to, because she's nine. She don't need to have, wear tampons. They're not fun. Give her a diva cup. <laughs> I don't think that, I've not had one of those, so I don't think that's fun. No, I don't think she, if she can't handle a tampon, I can't imagine her digging around in her vagina yeah. to get out of a blood-filled diva Ugh. cup. I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> All right, well, I would say this is a good transition spot, so... Uh, if you have, if for our nine listeners, if you have any funny stories about your kids. Or if you need some bad parenting advice. Or you have some ideas for topics for us. Yes. Or some critiques. We're always happy to hear critiques. Yep. Email us at uh, Guide to Poor Parenting or DM us on Instagram. We actually have a profile. I just don't ever post anything. I told Jennifer she's going to take over for Yeah, it. I'm going to take over on that, definitely, because we need to get some content yeah. out there. I think the, the trick is with the Instagram is we have to follow people and like comment on their stuff to get, I don't know. I don't know how this stuff. I'm and just going to start saying hi. Yeah. Hi, 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 come hi, listen hi, to us. hi, hi, hi. I did, well, so for our, if there's any new listeners, um, I actually did pay for a little advertising at a little comedy club. Yay. So uh, at Shenanigans Comedy Club here in town. Yep. So. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so. Email us at guide to poor parenting at gmail.com. Ms. Jennifer, what's our snack time today? We are eating Trader Joe's Spanish cheese tapa sampler. It's some good cheese. It's three different types of cheeses. And, and I really like it. That I do too. And it was only like five bucks. So yeah. like it was two two pieces of each cheese for us, which is a little like tri- uh, triangle. triangle shape. Yep. And it was really, really yummy. Mm-hmm. I only have one... And one in a bite left. <laughs> yeah. This I would like this is some good cheese. I like oh, it. Oh yeah, lot. definitely. I wouldn't mind buying it. All right, what's our story time, Jason? Um, you get to tell the story today. Oh Jesus Christ. Good story. So I, I mentioned earlier that we, you know, we've been limiting Clea's screen time. The reason we're doing that is because we went to dinner with Zane's mom and Zane's sister and her family and Zane's cousin and her husband and we were at dinner and Clea kept was like can I have the tablet I'm going to like interact with family and talk and you know be present but she was just being a grouchy little shit and like you know she had spent the entire day on the tablet in front of the TV so right. because of that I was like we need to we need to start limiting some of the screen time because her behavior is getting bad um, but while we were at dinner, I was I was getting kind of irritated. It was just so grouchy the entire time. Right. And, um, you know, we were getting ready to go. And I was like, Kalia, I was like, you have a whole big family here trying to interact with you, trying to enjoy your company. And she goes, well, they're not my biological. Nap. Oh. Damn, damn, damn. I was hot <laughs> when she said that. I was like, listen here, you little shit. I was like... If you do not appreciate the fact that this family loves you, then just go sit in the car. Yep. Oh, I was so mad. And I, I was like, does that mean we're not as good as your biological family? All right. Does that mean granddad's not your biological family? Because mm-hmm. that's granddad's family right there. <sighs> I was like, I'm not your biological family, so do I not matter? And she's like, I didn't say that. I'm like, that's what you implied. That's exactly that what she implied. That was a big implication right yeah. there. And oh, I was hot. <laughs> oh, I was so hot. Um, so yeah, it's, it's like the extra extraness of you're not my daddy. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like she, she called out the whole fucking family. Yeah. You're not my bad. It's your family. I'm like, bitch. I was like, I was like, I, I, hate to, I was like, is your biological family taking care of your ass? No. Oh, I, I mean, I hate to say it. Yeah. 
Um, I was like, I and I love my daughter, but yep. it was like, you ain't living with her. Nope. And your aunts and uncles ain't doing shit for you. Except for one. Except for one. But he ain't, he's not raising her. No. So I was like, you back the fuck off, That's little girl. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Her. Oh, oh, yeah. That one got me, man. I'm sure it did. <laughs> And well, after that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, thanks for all nine of our listeners for listening to another episode of Guide to Poor Parenting. If you like our podcast, give please give us a five-star rating on whatever platform you're listening on. And if you don't like our podcast, just like when our kids complain about their punishment, even though we watch them do it. Tough shit. God damn it. Oh. All right. <laughs> bye, bye guys. <laughs>